Andrew McGahan for SevereMMA.com here in gloomy Blanchardstown. I hear the sun legally isn't allowed to come out here, Cahill. Pete Carroll was telling me something about it. But in front of what seems like we've been waiting a long time for, uh, for those that don't know, well, they do know, you retired uh, within the last year. You said you were going to go into business, you were going to go into acting. You've done both of those things now. Finally, what does it feel like to finally get the doors opened? That's great. A lot of people were asking me, was I nervous? Was It's actually more like relief, to be honest, because it's just been so long. i actually been planning this for over a year. When I remember when I was in uh, over in Mexico fighting last year, just before that, I had gone and seen my first few locations, um, like potential units for this business. So it's, it's been a long time in the making, and um, you know, it's great to just finally have the doors open. At any stage, did it feel like maybe it wasn't going to happen, it was going to fall through, you couldn't find the venue? Is this Did this just fall in your lap, maybe a blessing in disguise? Yeah, to be honest, this this place was just a, a, a blessing in disguise. I, initially, I had been looking in town, and, and there was various uh, places that just kind of fell through, or just weren't worth, worth the money that was being asked for. Obviously, we're coming out of a recession now, and people were, I think people are getting a little bit greedy again, and, and uh, we just came across this place, and uh, you know it, it made complete sense. Blanchetown is such a such a, uh, a big area. Dublin 15 is is actually the largest urban area in in Dublin, and and it has the fastest growing population out here. And there's there's you know so many gyms and such a young population as well. But there's not many uh, you know clean healthy places to eat. So it just made perfect sense. That's what I was gonna say. Even from Jiu Jitsu and MMA, SBG Swords isn't too far away. Satori BJJ with the Sheridan brothers there. Multiple people training full time there. Is this the sort of venue? Or venture that it's just going to have athletes from all sorts of sports coming in to get proper good nutritious food 100 percent, and i don't think it's just athletes i think everyone these days just wants to eat a bit healthier people are more conscious than ever about eating healthy and and people are more knowledgeable about how to eat healthy so you know people are choosing the likes of chopped over you know a, a quick burger in mcdonald's so um you know it just it just makes sense and, and like i said not just for athletes it's for everybody just there's mothers and kids and, and and even some old folks we've had in here today so everyone's everyone's keen on a, on a healthy food is this a little bit throwbacky for you i know it is thursday throwback thursday but like as a man that would have had to cut a lot of weight to make the welterweight limit you lived on a on a lot of salads over over your years i'm sure while you're fighting well, this is this is how the the idea first came to me i mean for years i had to i, I was a big welterweight i had to pretty much diet the whole time uh, I, I you know I'd, and blow out after a fight but that was about it I was constantly eating healthy and I always found it so hard that it was hard to get somewhere healthy on the go you, you pretty much had to be making your meals the whole time it's getting quick easy food was just it was never healthy it was a chicken fillet roll or, or you know usually fast food to get to get good healthy food you'd have to go to a restaurant sit in and, and it was a long process there was no on the go healthy food so my my initial I, I thought about doing this years ago when I, when I was fighting and I didn't have the money to do it Obviously, I, I said, right, well, when I do get the money to do it, that's my plan. I got to the UFC, made some money, and I put it away. I never splashed any of my money I made. I always, my plan was always to set up a business. I knew, you know, as a professional athlete, it only, it's a very short shelf life, and, you, and you, you have to be preparing for the future, and that's what I was doing. The future obviously came quicker than I, than I had expected, just the way uh, things went. I decided to, to go down this route, and, and uh, yeah, so I... I, I I was initially going to do a healthy food place and I just happened to, to come across uh, Brian through, through Chris Fields actually. Chris Fields is training Brian Lee who's the, the owner of, of, of the, the parent company of Chopped and I decided well if I could get a sit down with him and just pick his brain because I wanted to open, open up my own. Yeah exactly and, and then he told me he was actually deciding to, to open up a, a, the, the stores as a franchise and initially when he said it to me I wasn't too interested I wanted to open up my own place. But then the more I thought about it, it just made sense for me. This is my first business venture, and to have someone like that on board and help me out, uh, you know, kind of show me the way, it just made sense. It's kind of like in the Dragon's Den, people come in not looking for money, they're more looking for the, for the dragon to, to show them the way, and that's the way I looked at it, and uh, it was just a perfect fit. It's worked out great. This is really weird, because it feels like you're speaking just like you were as you were fighting. <laughs> Do you know, like the way that you're m maybe methodically planning, like one thing you said there, my first business. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. This is Kyle Pender who's moved away from fighting completely and has thrown himself into the deep end. Like, if we want to talk about your fighting career, like you were always in at the deep end, fighting against guys that you were supposed to lose against for a large part of the career, and now it's like, ah, just this is my first business. Like, you know, the three and four will come now in the next year or something <laughs> like that. Well, that's it. I'm, I'm a an analysis of uh, you know my degree in, in college was, was in analytical science I analyze everything and I you know 
pick apart what I thought that was how where my success came from in in uh, MMA. I, I worked as hard as I could possibly could and I analysed every situation to, to make sure I was putting the best into it and that's the way I'm, I'm approaching my business. M MMA and martial arts have taught me so much and I'm actually taking that and I'm applying it to business now and, and acting as well. So uh, And no selfies with The Rock now, come on, you know, I'm <laughs> disappointed with that. Yeah, well, no. Did you at least get to talk to him? Yeah, I got to talk to The Rock and... Uh, was he I, asking for me? <laughs> he wasn't asking for you, no, but we exchanged phone numbers and we're, you know, we're always on the phone with each other now. It's great, like, it's great to have a friend like him. But no, he was uh, he was really cool. I was I was actually a little bit worried because I really I I think he's he's you know he's one of these guys you look up to and and I was worried that maybe he wouldn't be as cool as he makes himself out to be in on social media. But he was actually just as cool as as you could hope. One and 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 he actually gave me great advice. And, and he's a UFC and fan as well, isn't he? He's, he's, a, he's a he's a UFC fan and. Uh, I didn't actually tell him I was a UFC fighter. I kind of, I, we were having a conversation, and I didn't know how to bring it up naturally without kind of saying, "Oh, by the way, I've uh, fought in the UFC." <laughs> so I didn't get that far, but I actually tweeted him afterwards, and he tweeted me back. So hopefully, he was able to gauge from that that, that uh, I, I was a UFC fighter, but a very cool guy, and, and it was great to work with him. There you go. The patent. The just a f uh, two or three quick more things. It's nearly two years, just over two years since that night in Dublin for UFC Dublin, where uh, you got the victory in your UFC. Dave, well, your UFC first UFC fight in Ireland. How like what my UFC debut, UFC yeah. debut as well? What must that have been like for two years down the line? If you had a, if you had have been put down after that fight and said you're going to have one of the most active years of your life, fight wise, fight more times than maybe any guy that's ever come into the UFC after a debut, and then the year after that you're opening your own business. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have believed you to be honest. So, I, I, you know, things things sometimes work out differently than you expected, and and, and it definitely uh, definitely has gone down a different route. And it's weird. We were out here. I had a, a private opening just for friends and family the other day, and uh, I got a great surprise because I was actually ch talking to uh, Paddy Hulhan about coming out, and uh, he he was saying, well, Tuesdays is actually one of my busiest days coaching. He's obviously doing his own business adventure now in, in SPG and Tala. I said I, I I don't think I'm gonna make it. I said oh, that's a shame, but sure sure anyway. And and, and then up. she showed up on Tuesday, and it was actually a great moment because the two of us. It was the 19th of July. The two of us both made our debuts uh, in UFC Dublin on that night two years previously, and he just surprised me. And it was actually I nearly got a bit emotional. So he's gone on and doing his own business venture now, no longer in the UFC, and and the same with me. But we're still supporting each other. It was actually a really really special moment. Yeah, yeah. just on that, maybe even to finish because. Yourself and Paddy, the two guys, like from watching mixed martial arts for years, we see, and yourself as a fan, would have saw maybe the horror stories of the first generation, second generation batch of, batch of fighters that had to keep fighting late into their careers to be able to make money. Yeah. But I think the best thing to come from all of this is the fact that you have something like this. Paddy has SPG Tala, both thoroughly deserved to set you up perfectly for when you're outside of fighting like yeah we were actually sat in there the other night and and the one thing we had in common that was we were always looking past the UFC and I think that's something that's important because sometimes young people, fighters yeah you know I mean it's different when you're Connor and you're making your millions uh, he doesn't so much in, in fairness that guy will be thinking about the future as well but um, you know you have to you have to it's, it's a it's a short career ours we we ended up uh, coming out of it earlier than we thought and thankfully we had made money and we put it away for our own business adventures and then we we, now, now we're doing something we really enjoy and making making money and making a living from us. So yeah. Um, and actually, on that, you may be stepping on Mr. McGregor's toes. I don't know if you remember this after his first UFC fight, when he was posting pictures online of chicken-based pizzas that he was <laughs> making in his food processors. Shredded Joe's was the name of the <laughs> cafe that he was meant to open later on that year in Dublin, and chopped his beating the two in Blanchardstown. I, I, I actually remember when he came out with that, and uh, and because uh, I had been planning this for years, like uh, planning <laughs> like, planning yeah, a healthy food, and I remember I turned around to my brother, I was like, the bollocks, now people think I'm copying him, because uh, I obviously hadn't said it in an interview yet or anything, but no, I, I, it's, healthy food was always the way I wanted to go. Lovely. Carl, thank you very much. Best of luck. Thanks, William Andrew. Cheers.